There will always be those who dare to brave the lightning's glow. The way people charge in here as they please, so uncivilized. If I didn't know this was Tenshukaku, I might have mistaken it for some kind of street market. Have you learned your lesson now? Oh no! What has she done to Kujasara? The right to punish Inazumans for their crimes is mine alone. Not yours, Signora. Then I apologize, Almighty Shogun. I know, I know, you can't get me out of your mind. But you really don't need to call my name all the time. Don't go thinking I'm surprised to see you here. I'm well aware that you hate me, with the way you follow me around like a dark shadow. Ah. So you came to expose my crimes in front of the Shogun? <laughs> I'm just a Snezhnayan diplomat. I'm afraid I have no idea what you're talking about. She doesn't take us seriously at all! Stop talking about people and things that I care nothing about. They were nobodies to begin with, and their names will be forgotten. But now, at least, they get to be building blocks in the grand revolution to realize eternity. Is that not the greatest honor they could hope for, in their tiny little lives? Almighty Shogun, do correct me if I'm wrong. Hmm. That's ancient history. You certainly love to hold a grudge. The Tsaritsa's dream is the noblest and purest thing in all the world. These other mundane details you insist on mentioning? They're just necessary sacrifices, that's all. You? Stop me? <laughs> For what it's worth, I've grown tired of seeing you around as well. But I didn't have you down as someone quite so... foolhardy. Before you go saying something you can't take back, remember that you're Inazuma's most wanted criminal. I suggest you consider your circumstances very carefully. Charging into Tenshukaku uninvited and lecturing me in front of the Shogun wasn't the brightest move. Don't you think it's time you stopped digging? I'm not sure you realize quite how much distance there is between us, both in status and in strength. I challenge you... to a duel before the throne! <sighs> Proceed. My, you're full of surprises today. So you've learned to make the law of the land work for you, too, hmm. I'll admit that I never expected to be in a situation where the two of us were on equal footing. You are aware that the loser must die. Are you sure this is what you want? Traveler! 
<laughs> then I will deign to share this last dance with you. Till death do us part! A lesson on harbinger power and elegance? <laughs> As you wish. Freeze! You've got some nerve laying your hands on me! Harbinger power has become burdensome. I will manifest my destiny anew. Await my emergence and tremble, Traveler! You have reason to be afraid. Tsaritsa's benevolence, the pale flame smolders! to frozen shell and witness my suffering. <laughs> In fires of sin and retribution, your soul will be incinerated! Come a little closer. You're in for a little... <laughs> You're in for a little... Dodge this! So strong, but but how? I am a Snizhnayan diplomat. You know what happens if you lay a finger on me. I swear, if you strike me, I will make sure... The Fatui will make sure that your precious Inazuma... Stop! I order you! And you! Filthy rats! All of you! You are the enemy of eternity. <laughs> but as the victor, I acknowledge your honor. Therefore, I shall allow you to leave Tenshukaku alive. It was unbelievably powerful. It 
seems impossible to defend against. And if so, we've got no hope whatsoever of defeating her in combat. So, to recap, Yaimiko wants us to go back inside the plain of Euthymia by the statue of the omnipresent god. zapping in the air. Hyron can barely breathe. Traveler, are you okay? You're so silent. Sounds like there's a lot of noise coming from outside Tenshikaku. Has a fight broken out or something? Oh, the guards seem really nervous. Well, let's go see what the situation is, shall we? There will always be those who dare to brave the lightning's glow. again. Indulge my curiosity. What is the reason that I find you standing here before me once again? Do you hope your foolhardiness will shelter those people? Or was it simply a means of seeking an audience with me? Oh? <laughs> Surely you didn't rouse me from my state of eternal meditation only to tell me this. <laughs> if so, then you underestimate me. I am quite well informed about the Vision Hunt decree. Not so. Only everything that pertains to eternity. The Vision Hunt decree has my tacit approval. The Fatui's actions thus far do not constitute a threat to eternity. Otherwise... They would have been purged long ago. Individual ambition is inherently incompatible with eternity. What you might not realize is that all too often, people have far more to lose by chasing their dreams. Consider this. No one will lose their life on account of having their vision taken away. Rather, those who have lost their lives are the ones who insisted on pursuing their own aspirations, are they not? Traveler, your existence is unique in my eyes. There seems to be limitless uncertainty in you. To put it another way, you are the furthest thing from eternity. So, I won't insist that you comprehend the meaning of my actions. What matters is that I tread the path of eternity on my people's behalf. That's right. Huh. I'm surprised you understand it so well. Anyway, 
You're looking for a chance to shake my will, aren't you? Hmm. So be it. Well then, you who would defy eternity, time for you to enlighten me. Do you wish to become the enemy of eternity, Traveler? Dear me, aren't you cutting it rather close? Hmm? Miko, this was your doing? <sighs> now, now. Don't forget who taught you how to place your consciousness in objects. Surely you don't think your ambition alone is enough to shake A's will, do you? Though you alone are here, they too have ambitions. Which they long since entrusted to you. Now then, close your eyes. I hope we can <laughs> abolish the Vision Hunt Decree. Shadow. All will be severed. You've lost, eh? <sighs> yes, I have. Why can you not trust your people? and in the power of their ambitions. These ambitions have transcended space and time. They are something that no one can snuff out. Is this the lesson you learned from your journey in Liyue? There are nations where humans cast their god aside and stride forward. So are we to just abandon the notion of progress? For the sake of wishful thinking? You and I have both witnessed the great loss that progress can bring. Eternity. Eternity is the only way. When lightning flashes, it casts a shadow. My name means shadow. With my blade, I purged all obstacles to progress. And yet, something was lost with each step forward. In the end, I even lost her. The tales are still retold in the shade of every Thunder Sakura. But the wounds left on our nation by that terrible loss still ache. Never stop searching, even if only for a brief flash of light. If nothing else, we have the present moment. She said that once. But I've seen a nation strike forward and lose everything to the heavenly principles. Perhaps only if time stands still, will the lightning's glow never fade. The present moment is a fragile illusion. Only eternity can bring us closer to the heavenly principles. I am no longer the shadow. 
Mine is the most supreme and noble form. Let power over the realm be vested within me. In this form shall I honor my subject's dream. For a land of eternity, unchanging forevermore. The heavenly principles. Irrelevant nonsense as far as I'm concerned. When all said and done, all you really want is to protect your beloved Inazuma forever and ever. Isn't that right? <laughs> that would be something of an oversimplification. But is this nation worth existing for eternity? Stripped of ambitions, stripped of the potential for change, it does nothing more than simply... exist. It is a hollow shell of a nation. Hmm... I wonder what loss would it really be to anyone if such a nation were destroyed? Miko, retract your words. Never changing eternity is the promise I made to my people. But what your people need from you is not your promises. They want your attention. Your divine gaze. <laughs> you mean visions? Humans have a lifespan of barely a hundred years. They cannot afford to bear any extra losses. But I have experienced it all. That is why I have chosen to guide them along the correct path toward eternity. Oh. <sighs> but eternity is far too cruel a fate for you, eh? <sighs> for me? Not only have you stopped paying attention to the world, but you have stopped paying attention to yourself. It must have been terribly lonely here, all alone, for centuries on end. But it is necessary. You will miss much by refusing progress. You seek to prevent loss, but have you considered all you are losing by remaining here in stasis for all eternity? You are obviously lonely. And yet, for the sake of eternity, you choose to stretch your loneliness out to infinity. Tell me this. Why is the sky here that was once so dark glowing again? Why now? This is your plane of euthymia. It's your inner world. So it can only mean... that you are happy to see me again. You have found the loneliness here unbearable for a long time now, haven't you? I... Uh, have nothing to say to that. <laughs> but I have so much to say to you. Let me tell you all that has happened over the last few centuries. <laughs> How long will that take? As a fox envoy, I have an excellent memory. I recall every detail of the last few centuries with perfect clarity. So, it will probably take me another few centuries to relay it to you. <laughs> Miko, I never thought I would have the chance to meet with you like this again. <sighs> Seeing you again is a change to eternity. And a very nice surprise. <laughs> Since you are willing to admit that, I suppose that means we can still be friends? <laughs> what a childish conversation this is. Anyway, now that I have been defeated by you and your plan, I will honor your wish to abolish the Vision Hunt Decree. But, with regards to eternity, and the question of whether this nation should move forward, I need time to give it some thought. <laughs> <laughs> you are the one who's been acting like a child from the very beginning. As promised, the Raiden Shogun abolished the Vision Hunt Decree. Finally, her people's wishes penetrated her locked heart. Beyond the plane of Euthymia, she saw what eternity means in the eyes of the world. When one's fervent ambition burns brightly, the gods will cast their gaze upon you.
Some ambitions have the power to heal wounds, to bring victory, to inspire hope. But some ambitions outlive their masters long after the soul ascends. They remain as they were in the beginning. Burning bright and true for all eternity. triumphant traveler. And why might you be visiting the shrine? A sign of piety, perhaps. You literally told us to come meet you here! <laughs> I was just joking. I've been waiting for you. Seems like someone's in a pretty good mood. Mm-hmm. Catching up with an old friend I hadn't seen in years was truly delightful. By the way... I heard that you had a duel before the throne, with a Fatui Harbinger no less. Courageous and astute. I must say, I am most impressed. Defeating Signora head-on in a duel means that your strength exceeds my expectations. Still, you did end up victorious. I gather congratulations are in order. They caused plenty of trouble along the way, but at the very least, they didn't get their hands on another Gnosis. Wait a second. Did you say Gnosis? As in, the little thing that looks something like a chess piece? Yep, that's the one! You seen one too? Gnosis belong to the Seven. They're what keep them connected to Celestia. Oh. W what's wrong? I handed that over. You did what now? Well, how else was I supposed to save your skin from the Balladeer exactly? The Balladeer is number six of the Fatui Harbingers. In terms of strength, he is superior to Signora. I'm not the kind of person who risks life and limb for any old reason. After A created her puppet vessel, she no longer had anywhere to put it. As her erstwhile closest friend, A handed it over to me, and I've kept it in the Grand Narukami Shrine ever since. She no longer needs the power of the Gnosis, and in any case, she tells me she has severed ties with Celestia. Thus the Gnosis became not only useless, but also a potential source of conflict. Is that not a good bargain, exchanging it for the one at the core of the plan? Judging by the results, at least, I dare say I struck a good deal. <laughs> <sighs> when you put it like that, Paimon has to agree. The Traveler is worth more than a Gnosis. <sighs> well, what's done is done, and Paimon heartily thinks we'll be getting it back now. Let's leave the past in the past. Um, so, anyway, you still haven't told us why you called us here today. <laughs> it's to thank you. Really? You intend to travel all over Tavat, and the time has come for the Inazuma leg of your trip to come to an end, has it not? 
As a mark of my gratitude, I will answer any questions you may have about the road ahead or the events of the past. What would you like to know about? That puppet was built with technology that has been lost to time. Perhaps she, as a god, is the only one privy to the knowledge of its origins. Still, there is one other thing on this topic that I suspect you may be curious to know. Before A began modifying her own godly form, she took it upon herself to create a prototype puppet. So... You mean there are three Raiden Shokens? No. The prototype was merely a proof of concept. Its appearance and intellect were not based on A. It was a test. The original plan was for A to simply discard it. But perhaps A thought this to be too cruel, because in the end she chose only to seal the power within it. Later, this puppet wandered Inazuma as an ordinary human male with his own consciousness. Until... The Fatui took an interest in him. Ugh! Not the Fatui! Some eccentric geniuses in the ranks of the Fatui made adjustments to the prototype, not only unsealing his power, but very likely rendering him even more formidable than his original specifications. Mm-hmm. The object of divine creation is now the one who has taken possession of the Gnosis, and the prototype puppet is now known as the Balladeer. What in the... What a crazy story! It is, isn't it? Who can say whether it's coincidence or destiny? I'm surprised an outlander like you is aware that there was once a change of Electro Archon. Few citizens of Inazuma are aware of this. Morax told us. He said that the Electro Archon Ball has passed away. Yes. The truth of the matter is that there were two twin gods, Baal and Beelzebul. Twin gods? They won the Archon War together, and when Baal established the Shogunate, Beelzebul became her Kagemusha, or Shadow Warrior. In other words, she acted as Baal's body double. Beelzebul is A, with whom we are now both acquainted. Baal's name was Makoto. As far as the world was aware, there were not two, but one. They complemented each other, and they ruled Inazuma jointly, so there was no need for the public to know the truth. In fact, the name Ball and the title of Raiden Shogun was understood to refer to both of them, right up until... Until what? Makoto died several hundred years ago in a war that I was not personally involved in. Since then, A has assumed the Shogunate. Losing her sister must have been super hard on A. That was when A began to change. Makoto was her greatest loss. Paimon feels like she understands A a lot better now after finding that out. So what kind of god was Makoto? I didn't spend a great deal of time with her, but my impression was she was a gentle god who in each moment cherished the beauty of what was before her. Wow! Sorry, I haven't a clue. I'm also unfamiliar with the god you describe. But if you still have doubts about A, I would say they are misplaced. Not only does she not fit your description, but she voluntarily gave up her gnosis long ago, severing her ties with Celestia in the process. That's good to hear. Otherwise, given that I'm her familiar, it could have made our relationship rather awkward, don't you think? Don't worry. We aren't looking to pick a fight with you. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. May you soon discover the truth behind it all. As for your sister's whereabouts, I will use all the resources at my disposal to investigate it, and I will also borrow some of Ayato's people from the Shiumatsuban. I'll let you know if I find out anything. Consider it part of my means of thanking you. After leaving Inazuma, hmm, I think it would be easiest for you to go to Sumeru. Ooh, Sumeru! We've run into loads of scholars from there on our journey so far! Yes, well, 
Sumeru is the land of the God of Wisdom, where the quest for wisdom and knowledge is never-ending. But their obsession gives rise to some truly inexplicable things. For example, in Sumeru, knowledge is holistically managed as a resource. Knowledge is a resource? Yes. I don't know whether it was the sages or Lesser Lord Kusanali who came up with the idea. Lesser Lord Kusanali? That's a cute name! Oh, you haven't heard. Lesser Lord Kusanali is the deity in whom the people of Sumeru place their faith. It's their chosen term of endearment for her. I'm sure you must have some things to discuss with her too. I wish you all the best. Are you sure? Okay then. Oh, Traveler, do you still have the Omamori I gave you? Keep it safe. Is that all you intend to do with it? There was me thinking that you might hang it around your neck to show off to the world, telling everyone who inquired that it was given to you by none other than Yai Miko, the wise and beautiful. Who in their right mind would do that? <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Now, a question for you. Traveler, what is your ambition? I see. But that is merely a small goal, based on what preoccupies you here and now. Your ambition should be something that transcends the world below and the starry sky above. Something that shines in unison with fate itself. Perhaps the reason you do not possess a vision is that such an ambition has yet to be engendered within you. It's a possibility. Continue on your journey, and maybe that moment will come to pass. Oh, the, 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 the,